While studying for these games on uh, Sergei Karakin for this DVD, it's remarkable to see just how many strong players he has downed using pure tactics alone. And this game is no different against Alexandra Kostinik in his match against her in 2003 in Brissago. Um, not sure again of the time in it, but I think it was a slow play game. And they currently reach the position, as you see on the board here, where it's a fairly level position from a uh, Sicilian Kalashnikov. Here we see, though, um, Karakin play the move Queen to b6. Now, that move appears to just drop the pawn on d5. Now, if you yourself think, as the viewer, that you're an excellent tactician, and you haven't seen this game before, I would advise you to try and study as far ahead as possible what you can see, because I'm pretty sure that most of us wouldn't have seen what he saw. Um, it's a an excellent uh, set of uh, tactics to down uh, black in this position. Now, black took the pawn on d5. Despite the fact that there are just two pawns here, black actually has some back rank checkmate problem ideas because the queen on f7 isn't really a good a good piece in that respect whenever white gives a check on the back rank the queen is going to have to uh, blockade uh, which you know isn't really a good idea in this position so that explains Karakin's next move which is tactic number one the queen takes a6 now that means that if black were to take on a6 straight away white will end up winning immediately rook takes c8 Queen f8 and the intermezzo bishop takes d5 check and black will be checkmated in short order. The king will have to move and the queen will be captured with checkmate. So that, of course, black would have seen. But both sides have actually exchanged a pawn for a pawn. So white has now two pawns on the queen's side, but black has potentially two useful pawns in the centre. So this is okay for black at the moment. But uh, apparently black should have now played rook c to b8. And this would have kept the attack on the queen and now attacked the pawn on b4. I'm not saying Kerry can chance this idea, but uh, I think he just thought that basically after queen d3, the position was still quite good for him. He still has these two passed pawns and he's going to just push them up the board at some moment. Um, but black still would have been in the game here. Instead, Kostenik spotted a tactic here. She thought she could get away with this idea. Now, of course she would have seen the following moves, but there's a key twist, uh, sting in the tail, that she has missed in this position. Rook c8 check, of course winning the queen back. Now where does the black queen have to go? We've already seen what happens if black goes queen f8 in this position. Black gets checkmated. So, of course, queen e8. And after queen, rook takes e8 check. Black played king f7. This appeared to be, uh, to be completely winning, because... Um, the bishop is attacked on b3, and the king is attacked like this. Actually, white does have a move to defend, which is bishop a4. Um, but Karakin noticed a spectacular move in this position. Can you see what it is? He played rook to a8. A fantastic move in this position. Um, and a move that most of us would, would really struggle to find. He simply puts the rook on a square where both of black's major pieces can capture it. But of course, the bishop cannot capture it due to the pin. And the point of this is to lure the black rook on to a8 because bishop takes d5 check or fork it. And uh, white is completely winning. A fantastic tactic, and it appeared just out of nowhere. And it really goes to show just how, if you study your tactics at any level, it will make you a better player.